Բարիոր հարգելի գործ ընկերներ այսօր մեզի կենտրոնում տեղի կունենա Human Rights Watch-ի 2016 թվականի նոր զեկույցի ներկայացումը երեխաների իրավունքների խախտումները Հայաստանի մանկատներում եւ այլ հաստատություններում թեմայով։ Տեղեկացնեմ, որ զեկույցում անդրադարձ է կատարվել նաեւ Հայաստանում ներառական կրթության ոլորտում մարկախոչ ընդդոտներին հաշմանդամություն ունեցող երեխաների համար։ Այսպիսով ես ներկայացնեմ մեր հյուրերին, մեր բանախոսներն են Jane Buchanan Human Rights Watch-ի Եվրոպայի եւ կենտրոնական Ասիայի ով փոխ տնորեն հետազոտող եւ զեկույցի հեղինակ Գյորգի Գոգիա Human Rights Watch-ի հարավային կովկասի մասով տնորեն զեկույցի հետազոտող եւ 12 ամյա մարի Մինասյանը, ով հաճախում է ներառական դպրոց գորիսում։ Ես շնորհակալ եմ բոլոր բանախոսներին մեծ կենտրոնի հրավերը ընդունելու համար եւ այսօր այստեղ ներկա գտնվելու համար, այսպիսով անցնելով զեկույցին, ես առաջին խոսքը փոխանցում եմ Գյորգի Գոգիային։ Պարոն Գոգիա, ինչպես հայտնի է ուսումնասիր ուտյունը կատարելու համար անցկացվել է հա հետազոտությունը հայաստանի 8 քաղաքներում եւ զեկույցի իր մեջ ներառում է նաեւ որոշ հանձնարարականներ ուղղված հայաստանի կառավարությանը եւ միջազգային կազմակերպություններին ես նախ եւ առաջ կխնդրեի որ դուք ներկայացնեք որն է այս ուսումնասիրության հետազոտության բուն նպատակը եւ ինչ մեթոդաբանությամբ է այն իրականացվել խնդրեմ համեցեք Thank you very much. Uh, morning, everyone, and welcome uh, to, to this press conference. Uh, let me start by quickly explaining who we are and why we're here, and then turn to the question about methodology that has been used to produce this report. As you know, uh, we represent here a Human Rights Watch. This is an international, non-governmental human rights organization that works over 90 countries in the world. Um, I am uh, the South Caucasus director working on Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. Human Rights Watch has been working in Armenia for over two decades on a number of issues, um, starting from police brutality, ending with rights of children, palliative care, and others. Today here, we're presenting the report about rights of children in institutions and access to quality education. Um, our government of Armenia has been engaged in a uh, deinstitutionalization process of closing institutions uh, for several years and has a, has a goal to close them all, or majority of them, by 2020. Uh, we decided to do this research because this was the right time to look into how far, the, what has been the progress so far, and what are the gaps that we think government should be filling and what are the lessons learned so far, and how the international law, what are the international law standards. Let me say a few words about the methodology that has been used to produce this report. Uh, we have, Inter Human Rights Watch has done this research throughout the year, and we have interviewed over 170 people in eight cities of Armenia, including Yerevan, Kapan, Goris, Vanadzor, Gyumri, Armavir, Hatsik, and Chambarak. We interviewed uh, 47 children, 63 families of children living in orphanages or attending special schools or mainstream schools. We visited five orphanages and 10 special schools, including six, 10 schools, including six special schools. And we have spoken with all relevant staff members, including directors, teachers, social workers, doctors, caregivers, psychologists, and others. Uh, we have also interviewed government officials, all relevant government officials that, have, um, that are in charge of, of uh, institutions in Armenia, including Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Territorial Administration and Development, Yerevan Municipality Office, um, as well as other relevant government officials. And uh, finally, we have interviewed um, over a dozen NGOs who have been working on the issues of children's rights in Armenia. Շատ լավ շնորհակալություն ներկայացնելու համար մինչ հաջորդ բանախոսին խոսքը փոխանցելը մենք մի փոքրիկ տեսանյութ գտիտենք որը վերաբերում է հայաստանում հաշմանդամություն ունեցող երեխաների եւ տեսանյութում ներկայացված է նաեւ 12 ամյա մարի պատմությունը խնդրեմ միացրեք տեսանյութը այնուհետև շարունակենք մեր քննարկումը շնորհակալություն
sound. We apologize for some technical difficulties, but I'm sure it's going to be fixed. Maybe we should present the findings and uh, wait for, for it to be the sixth. որպիսի շատ ձեր ժամանակը չխելենք, մի գուցե շարունակ ենք քննարկում ես խոսքը սիրով փոխանցեմ մեր հաջորդ բանախոսին, այն ու հետև կդիտենք տեսանյութը։ Ներեցեք, եթե հարց ունեք, առաջին բանախոսի ներկայացվածի հետ կապած կխնդրան բարձրախոսով ներկանակ եւ ուղեք ձեր հարցը։ Can we because we have not yet presented the report, can we wait and then questions in the end? Ներից եք ձեր հարցը վերաբերում է առաջի բանախոսի ներկայացվածի շատ լավ մի փոքր ուղակի եթե լրացնող հարցը խնդրեմ Շատ լավ ներից եք մենք հիմա այս թերթականության անցնելու ենք նաև արդյունքներին այնպես որ ձեր հարցի նույնպես անդրադառնալու ենք Շատ լավ շնորհակալություն ես այժմ խոսքը փոխանցում եմ սիրով Ջեյն Բուխանային կխնդրեմ ավելի հստակ ներկայացնեք թե զեկույցում հա երեխաների իրավունքների հետ կապված ինչ խնդիրներ խախտումներ եք արձանագրել եւ մանկատներում եւ այլ հաստատություններում ինչպես նաեւ ներառական կրթության ոլորտում եւ այս առումով իրավական կարգավորման դաշտում ինչ բացեր եւ թերի կողմեր Great. Thank you. So almost uh, 3,500 children live in state orphanages and other residential institutions in Armenia. They are there overwhelmingly due to poverty or disability. Their international human rights standards, to which Armenia has committed, including to protect the rights of children and the rights of people with disabilities. So we investigated the situation of children in Armenia based on these key international principles. Children thrive best in a family. There's extensive research that shows children who grow up in inst residential institutions may experience developmental delays, delays in, uh, in intellectual development and social development. Neither poverty nor disability can be the basis for removing a child from their family. But if those factors exist in a family, that should instead be a signal to the government to provide services and support to that family. People with disabilities have the right to live in the community and not to be segregated or isolated. Institutions of any type should always be the last resort and only for a short period in exceptional circumstances. If in the rare case a child can't remain with their birth family, alternative family options are always the best option. Many people with disabilities, um, children growing up in institutions, and also people with disabilities as they become adults, remain in institutions their entire lives. But children in institutions aren't orphans. They're, UNICEF estimates that about 90% of children have at least one living parent. So in the institutions that we visited in Armenia, overwhelmingly we found that the material conditions, while very basic, are satisfactory. But children in orphanages often don't get the care and attention that they need. They're organized in groups of 12 to 15 children with very few caregivers. This, will, this can affect their development, their growth, especially for babies and children with disabilities. Resources, important resources, such as rehabilitation, certain specialists, are available only behind the walls of closed institutions rather than in communities. So many parents, due to poverty or disabilities, felt compelled to place their children in an institution in order to get the very basic care that their child needed and that they wanted for them. For children who grow up in institutions, there's very little preparation for them to leave when they, when they become 18 as adults. For children with disabilities, this is especially true. So every child, when they turn 18 and become an adult, they have the right to exercise their legal capacity that means they have the right to make decisions for themselves about where they live, whether they want to get married, where they want to work. 
but often young, young adults with disabilities are stripped of their legal capacity, based exclusively on their disability, and placed in institutions for adults where they basically spend the rest of their lives. So we know that the government of Armenia is transforming institutions for children and reducing the number of children in institutions. But it has no specific plans to transform the three orphanages for children with disabilities. So even as the overall number of children in residential institutions goes down, the concentration of children with disabilities in institutions go up. They're segregated and isolated on the basis of their disability. The government is obligated to provide family options for, people who can't, for children who can't remain with their families. But in Armenia right now, there is budget support for only 25 foster families for the entire country. There are essential amendments to the family code that would help develop more foster care and adoption options, but these have been stuck in the government and not presented to parliament. So without these changes, without real opportunities in the community, children will continue to be placed in institutions. This is a violation of their rights. An essential element of moving children out of institutions, making sure that they can grow up in the community, in their family, is inclusive education. This is a system whereby children with disabilities and children without disabilities study together in one classroom. And children with disabilities get the necessary accommodations that they need to succeed academically and to thrive in a school environment. It can't simply be integration, where children attend the same school for the sake of being there. There must be actual equal opportunities for academic advancement. The child should not be expected to conform to the system. Rather, the system should be flexible to acknowledge the strengths and challenges of every individual child. So we visit a number of in inclusive schools to understand how the government is progressing on its goal to achieve total inclusive education across the country. So although there are a number of children now with disabilities enrolled in special in inclusive schools, many of them only attend for a few hours a day or for a few hours a week. A parent, most often a mother, may have to stay with the child in order to provide the necessary supports because there is no one in the school to provide basic assistance if the child needs uh, help with personal care, help understanding directions, communication. So children may be present in the classroom, but they're not actually engaged in the curriculum. We met one girl who had a very elemental disability related to her hands. It was difficult for her to write. But instead of finding alternatives for her to participate in the classroom, to pass exams orally, to have another way to take notes, to learn the material. She was actually given painting, knitting, and expected just to sit in the classroom. And there are many examples like this, and this is neither inclusive education nor quality education. We also found that children with disabilities, because of obstacles in accessing schools, the lack of supports in schools, or difficulties in the community, are left out of schools altogether. They're isolated and left at home. Across the work, we found that stigma and discrimination against people with disabilities remain serious concerns, and it's essential that schools and the government at all levels fight against this. But inclusive schools where children with and without disabilities are together is one of the most essential means for combating discrimination so that children grow up with a diversity of people around them that carries them all through their lives. Thank you. Շնորհակալություն ներկայացնելու համար այժմ մենք կարող ենք դիտել տեսանյութը, այնուհետև խոսքը փոխանցենք մարի։ Ներին ծնվել է 2009 թվի օգոստոսի 12-ին Սրբի առատով այդ դահուն հիվանդության այդ հատկանիշներով իրենք ասել էին ամենա շատ կապի երևի մոտավորապես մի երկու ամիս ու դենց ես էլ դիգնոչը սամոզեցի հազիվ շատ դժվարությամբ մի քանի օրում որ մենք հրաժարվենք մերից Mary didn't die as the doctors had predicted several years later after a family crisis her parents decided that they needed to find out what had happened to her 
and after some searching, they found her in an orphanage. Children with disabilities in Armenia often end up in orphanages. Institutions often have many more services available than are available in the community. These can be things like rehabilitation services, health services, psychological supports. Even in the best institutions, children frequently don't get the individual attention that they need. They're stuck in a very strict routine in terms of meals, uh, in terms of activities. They're very often confined to the institution, so it can be very detrimental to their overall development. The Armenian government has committed to reducing the number of children living in orphanages and other types of institutions. What it hasn't done yet is to make sure that there are sufficient services available in the communities to support children and their families. Social supports, rehabilitation, appropriate medical care, education. Yes, Mari Minasiana, Tasir Kutarekana. Yes, Aprome Mari Kins, Yev Kudikis, Ani Head. Yes, Unam Hashman Tamita Hunted in Vateras. Mari attends an inclusive school in her community. Inclusive education is where children with disabilities and children without disabilities study together in one school, in one classroom. But it's not enough just to put them together in one classroom. Schools are obligated to provide reasonable accommodations to children with disabilities. So for a child with low vision, this can mean providing large print textbooks. For a child who has a hearing disability, it can mean providing a sign language teacher or maybe even just placing that child in the front of a classroom. It also means providing certain basic accessibility, for example, accessible toilets. There's only one bathroom that's accessible to Mari. It happens to be in the boys' bathroom. So she takes pretty extreme measures to avoid having to use the bathroom during the day, not drinking or eating before she goes to school. The toilet is also on the ground floor, and most of her classes are on upper floors of the school. Mari can participate in the classroom alongside her peers, but a lot of children with disabilities aren't so fortunate. What shouldn't happen is for children with disabilities to be placed in a community school but then be segregated in their education. They should be integrated as much as possible into all aspects of school life. <laughs> Children have the right to grow up in a family, and children with disabilities have the right to be included in the community. A lot of studies have shown that it's actually much less expensive for governments to provide community-based services than it is for them to support large institutions. Large institutions are expensive. They require a lot of personnel. They require a lot of maintenance. All of that is money that exists within the government that they can simply redirect to community-based services that will be accessible to children and their families so that children can grow up at home.
արդեն որոշակիորեն պարզ դարձավ թե ինչ խնդիրներ կան դպրոցում որտեղ սովորում է Մարին այնուամենայնիվ կխնդրեի Մարիե մի փոքր ավելի մարամասը ներկայացնել սկսած շենքային պայմաններից հա ինչ խնդիրներ կան որ եթե լուծվեին կամ ինչի կարիքը կար որ եթե լուծվեր ապա կհեշտացներ հա ուսման պրոցեսը քեզ համար խնդրեմ ինձ համար դժվար է հարկերը բարձրանալա և դրա համար կարող է լիներ թեքահարթակներ կամ վերերակներ, որ հեշտությամբ բարձրանամ եվ իչնև, կամ կարող է են զուկարանի հարցը լուծել, որը նույնպես դժվար է, կանի որ ես երոր Ես որքանով հասկացա, ձեր դպրոցում չկան այլ երեխաներ, ովքեր ունեն հաշմանդամություն և որ հաճախեն դպրոց։ Ձանոտ ես, որ ձեր շրջակայքում, կաղաքում կան այլ երեխաներ, ովքեր ունեն հաշմանդամություն, սական պայմանների բացակայության պատճարով, դպրոցի շենքային պայմանների բացակայության պատճարով, չեն հաճախում դպրոց, կամ տնային պայմաններում են սովորում։ Ես չգիտեմ հիմա ինչ երեխաներ կան, բայց գիտեմ, որ իմ հարևանուհիս եղել այդպիսի հաշմանդամության խնդիր է ունեցել և նա դոպրոս չի գնացել, կանի որ հարմարություններ չեն եղել, նա միջև չորս տարի ուսուցիշներ եկել են իրենց տում, բայց դրանից հետո նա կրտություն չի ստացել։ Շատ լավ շնորակալություն ներկայասնելու համար, այժմ սիրով հնարավորություն է մնձարում նաև դրագրողներին, եթե կան հարցեր զեկութի հետ կապված, եթե հարց ունեք խնդրման բարձրախոսը փոխանցեք, դու կարող եք ուղել արդեն ձեր հարցերը։ Հնդրում եմ ներկայացեք։ Արմենի հերոսնային կերություն Մանու իրիթյան։ Հոգուզեի մանալ ինչ լուծումներ եք առաջարկում, որով հետև ներառական կրթությունը գիտենք, որ կա, դուք էլ ասեցի կարավարության տարբեր պարտավորությունները, որ ստանցնել � Thank you. Um, one of the most important elements is moving resources that are available now only in institutions behind closed doors into the communities where they are accessible and available to anyone who needs them. Right now, resources are so concentrated in orphanages, uh, residential institutions, that many parents feel they don't have any option other than to place their child there. So it's important that those resources, services are moved out of the residential institutions, diversified into the community, and that there's constant um, work in the communities from social workers, from others, to identify families in need and to be sure that they get the, the exact resources that they need. Պարոնգոգյա, եթե հարցի հետ կապած, հարցի հետ կապած, եթե արձագանքում ակ, խնդրամ համացիք։ So children in Armenia are needlessly separated from their parents due to poverty or disability in many cases. The government has an obligation to identify possibilities to support families in their communities. 
rather than being having children placed in institutions as the only place to receive the support and care that they need. Inclusive education exists in many inclusive schools in Armenia in name only. It means that children with disabilities can attend those schools, but they aren't receiving a quality education. The government isn't providing an essential supports for children to study in, alongside their peers, to achieve academically in order to get a quality education. And without the availability of resources in the communities and a quality education in community schools, as well as the continued existence of institutions, children will continue to be placed there rather than grow up in the family. Thank you. I think that the whole, whole point of this presentation is to present the main findings of the report. I can uh, speak, I mean, besides what Jane has already said, for example, we can, we can, we can speak about, um, about how the process of deinstitutionalization is going. Um, government, as we said, has committed to closing down um, some institutions. At the same time, children with disabilities often end up in a different institution. So this is, uh, a, this is discriminatory. Every child has the right to live in a family. As, and government has an obligation to try to fulfill um, that right. At the same time, um, over 90% of children in institutions have at least one living parent. In the cases when there is no, if, if, if government is not able to return children in the families, they should be available foster families. Right now, only the government budget of Armenia provides for only 25 foster families and urgent reforms are needed, including in the law of family code that would allow the development of this institution so every child will be able to live in a family. Շատ լավ շնորհակ ալություն ձեր նշած խնդիրների հետ կապված արդեն քանի տարի է դուք ինքներդ նաև ձեր խոսքում նշեցիք որ կառավարությունը իրականացնում է ծրագիր միջազգային կազմակերպությունների ֆինանսավորմամբ եւ այդ բարեփոխումների գործընթացը դեռ իրաքտիվ փուլում է ես գուզեի հասկանալ դուք նախկինում արել եք նման հետազոտություն հայաստանում 5 տարի առաջ կամ 10 տարի առաջ իրավիճակի հետ կապված եւ կարող եք արդյոք համեմատել որոշակի դինամիկա այս բարեփոխումների գործընթացում ինչ this is the first time that we've studied this issue in Armenia. We decided to take up this issue um, at this time because it, the process is very dynamic. It's ongoing. The government has made some very bold commitments, um, but we wanted to weigh in with the human rights perspective to ensure as the government continues its reforms, it does so in a rights respecting way. So again, it's not enough to transform institutions, to close them and to move children out. You need to make sure that those children are able to return to their families with the necessary supports that made and solve the vulnerabilities that existed in the first place. So we're certainly encouraged by the, the efforts of the government, um, but they won't be successful unless it's done in a rights-respecting way. Uh, well, fortunately, we've had um, we've had open dialogue with many of the ministries, with all of the ministries that are relevant here. 
Um, so we're encouraging them to, to see these recommendations and to find ways to implement them. And some of the key recommendations are to ensure that children with disabilities are not left out of this process. There are no plans at the moment to close the three orphanages that are specialized for children with disabilities. If the government fails to close those institutions at the same time as closing institutions where children without disabilities live, this is discrimination. It continues the isolation and segregation of people with disabilities who have the right to live in the community. With respect to inclusive education, again, it's, it's very significant that the government has tried to implement this across the country. Um, it's bold and it's important. But it cannot simply be that children are studying in the school. They have to be able to receive a quality education. The government needs to provide reasonable accommodations to students. Some of these are absolutely no cost. Um, some of them can be a matter of transform, transferring resources. So caregivers, other support staff who work currently in orphanages or special schools, they can be re-employed re uh, in schools to provide um, assistance to children. These don't have to be teachers, they don't have to be professionals, they just can be people who are there to support particular needs of a child, to help them remain in the classroom and achieve academically alongside their peers. <clears throat> With respect to donors, we've seen a lot of interest in these issues for many years. Uh, an overwhelming uh, an effort and initiative in these reforms comes from, com comes from donors. So we're encouraging them to take also these recommendations and ensure that any projects that they're funding also support exactly these recommendations. Շատլավ <laughs> խնապքի հաստատություններում հա ինչպես է այս գործ ընթացի իրականացվում մյուս հարցը վերաբերվում է կոնկրետ իրավունքների ոտնահարման երեխաների կոնկրետ օրինակներ այսքան հետազոտելով հայաստանում կոնկրետ օրինակներ ունեն կոնկրետ որ ավելի այսպես մի քանի նախադասությամբ նշեք հա թե ինչ կոնկրետ իրավունքներ են ոտնահարվել կոնկրետ ուցե տեղերով եւ հա հա դեմքերով դեմքերով եւ երրորդ հարցը կխնդրեի այսպես ամբողջական ամփոփում հա անեի անելով ասեի հայաստանում իմա վիճակը լավ է բաց է նորմալ է այսպես դեր գնահատական ըտայ գործ ընթացին շնորհակալություն շնորհակալություն խնդրեմ So Human Rights Watch um, strives to do research to examine how each government is implementing its human rights obligations. So it's not our place to compare uh, whether one government um, you know, is doing better or, or not. Um, that said, I think there are, there are good examples um, in countries that have moved from a system of relying on institutions for children um, who may need uh, to be temporarily moved out of the family, for them to be placed in foster care, also for children in those rare cases where they really can't stay with their family because of particular vulnerabilities, that there's foster care and adoption available, that that system works, that that's the system, that that's the first option available. And what we see in Armenia is that those systems don't function yet. And without, those, without foster care and adoption in place, children will continue to be placed in institutions. Um, what was the second question? Oh, concrete examples. So we've produced a report um, that highlights these different issues from the perspective of personal experiences. So the interviews with children, with their families, 
I think you'll find in the report, um, as well as in the press release, some clear examples of the experience of families and children who, um, who have been in institutions, who um, have had to, to, parents who have had to make the difficult decision to, uh, to place their child in an institution, the emotional toll that that takes on them. Um, and I also wanted to mention, as our other materials, we now produce um, what's called easy to read versions of our reports. These are designed for people with intellectual disabilities uh, to, to be readable. So I encourage everyone to, to take a look at these. Um, it's a way of being, ensuring that people with different types of disabilities, with different types of ways of understanding information um, can also learn about these issues. Շատ լավ ներեցեք մեկ ճշտող հարց, այսինքն ձեր զեկույցում կան թվային տվյալներ, որոնք ցույց կտան օրինակ ներառական կրթության մասով, կանի հաշմանդամություն ունեցող երեխայ, որ շենք հայն պայմանների բացակայության I will follow up on the previous question just to add that um, this report is full of examples, obviously. If you want concrete names, they, obviously these are children, so many of their names have been changed. We, we had to protect their privacy, right? Uh, as for, so, but the examples are there. So as, as we, we visited uh, many orphanages, schools, special schools, inclusive schools, so we have interviewed children, and that's the basis for the report. Um, second, um, regarding the, um, I'm forgetting now, what was the question? Children left out of education. Um, I, I don't think we have exact number of um, children who have been left out from institutions. The, one of the issues that uh, is very clearly highlighted in the report, for example, is that the issue with special schools and orphanages, children are organized in small groups, 12, 15, sometimes 17 uh, children, many of them with severe disabilities. As usually, there's one or two professionals working with these children. So even in best case scenarios, it is very difficult to provide individual care, the right the children have. So this is an example of, uh, of how institutions, even in the best, with the best intentions, there, there is not enough uh, care provided to the children that they deserve and they need. Sorry, I just wanted to add on the point of, of data and numbers. It's a really important question, and it's something that the government should be doing consistently in order to develop effective policies. So one of the things that we documented uh, quite extensively is children enrolled in schools formally, but they actually don't attend those schools they receive something called home education. Home education is a substandard education whereby children get a few hours a week in Armenian, Russian, and basic mathematics. Under law, it's meant to be for short-term emergency situations or illness or some reason a child can't attend school. But we found this actually many cases in which children received home education their whole lives. And there's no comprehensive tracking of this. So these children are registered and it looks like they go to school, but they actually don't. They're stuck at home.
No, the government hasn't done enough. The government has made some bold commitments, but it, has, it isn't fulfilling them fully. For example, it's committed to close 22, sorry, transform 22 residential institutions. That leaves many institutions still open, including three orphanages with children with disabilities. The numbers of children in those institutions don't decrease. So there isn't sufficient effort to ensure that children with disabilities enjoy their right to live in the community. The government also hasn't done enough to take resources out of institutions, away from buildings, and put those resources into communities with social workers, with accessible services, so that families can get them. It can't transform institutions and move children out of them without at the same time having some resources available to families. These are vulnerable families and they will stay vulnerable unless there's a very direct and con concerted effort to get them the resources they need. Make just to hearts, Zen Gnehatakan Edit Kapats, Musco, Mits, I am an Idakanas Neluhamar, Parza, or Karavarutunumish, Homakatam, the Shell of Finansaka, Bavada, Resource Ner Chican. I do the Kapumak, Bavada, Finansaka, Resource Ner Chunen Aluete, I know I'm an Anip, Esther, Kazma, Kepchakan, Hartsernen, or Karavarutunichika, Ranungorti, the Nel Yev, at Ragredi Idakanats Nel. Zerdi Dark Mom. So UNICEF did an analysis of, of the resource concentration in institutions. It costs between $3,000 and $5,000 a year to keep a child in an institution. Institutions are expensive. There's a lot of maintenance that goes into the buildings. They require a lot of personnel. Overwhelmingly, that personnel is not dedicated to the care and support of children. So the resources do exist. It's a matter of being able to transfer them away from institutions, buildings, excessive personnel, and using that re those resources for families. There is a very basic principle that the money should follow the child. The money should not go to a government building. Շատ լավ շնորհակալություն գնահատականների եւ դիտարկումների համար, եթե կան այլ հարցեր լրագրողների կողմից, խնդրեմ կարող եք ներկայացնել Եթե ոչ ամփոփելով այսօրվա մեր ասուլիսը, ես կխնդրեի հարգելի բանախոսներ ներկայացնեք արդյոք առաջիկա տարիներին պատրաստվում եք, որպես հասկանալի է, որ այս ուսումնասիրությունը նաև որոշակի վերահսկողական մեխանիզմ է կառավարության կողմից իրականացվող այս ծրագրին, պատրաստվում եք արդյոք առաջիկա տարիներին բրկին նման ուսումնասիրություն անել եւ համամատական տանել ձեր նշած հանձնարականները կատարվել են թե ոչ եւ ընդհանրապես այս ծրագիրը ինչ ուղով է ընթացել։ Կան դրական միտումներ, կլինեն դրական միտումներ թե ոչ։ Um, thank you for the question. Yes, this is just the beginning. Obviously, we have uh, worked over a year to produce this report, and it makes very concrete recommendations to the government and the international community how to proceed with this. Uh, we, yes, for past two days and today and tomorrow, we will be, we already have had, and we will be meeting more government officials, presenting the findings and recommendations. We plan to continue to engage with them very closely in coming months and years to monitor how the, prog the progress government is making for the progress and uh, make additional recommendations as needed. But this is definitely something we will continue to keep track of and monitor in future. Can I say, yeah. Um, I did just, I wanted, since we have Mari here, I did just want to um, highlight you know, a very kind of concrete example. Um, 
So uh, Mari comes from Gouris. Um, we know that there the government uh, very recently closed two special schools, one in Gouris and one in Sisian. Uh, and is, has moved those children back to their families. And yet we, um, we've heard from Mari that there aren't reasonable accommodations uh, in the school in Goris that she attends, a school that's considered an inclusive school. So we can see a very concrete example where the government has already moved to closed institutions at the same time, it hasn't provided the necessary services and accommodations in a, even in an inclusive school. Shatlov, Shnara Kaltsu, nice piece of Yesra Pakenk, Merai Sorva Sulisi, Yetichkan El Hartzer, Yes Yevas Mekankam, Shnara Kaltsu, Nam Hait Numer Vana Hosnerin. Nerkaketnovelu Hamar, I saw Vamera Sulisi, Niskore Hetevo Horts and Gernerin, Barzapas, he says, Namor, I saw Medjak and Tronum, Terunets of Human Rights Watch, Yerkazartas Nevest, Vakani Nor, Zekuci, Nerkatsuma, Yerhaneri, Ravunk Neri Hartum, Nera has Tani Mankatanerum, Yaval has Tatuzun Nerum Temayo, Yermerbana Hosner, Ninja, Buchanan, Georgi Kogian, Yermari Minasian, Snarakalsin. <laughs> 